All right, uh, let's start with our devotion for today. Um, this story is going to go with Jesus dies and is buried. That's found in Matthew and Mark. So here is our devotion. Christopher sat with his head in his hands. He didn't want to watch TV. He didn't want to play baseball. He didn't want to do anything. He was trying to pretend that nothing had changed. Christopher was so upset that he didn't hear his mom come into the room and put a box on the floor next to him. I went to Grandpa's house today, she said. I brought home some things that I thought you might like to have. You can look at them when you feel like it. Then his mom left the room. I'll never feel like it, whispered Christopher. He sobbed when he thought about Grandpa. One day he was cheering at Christopher's baseball game and the next day he was dead of a heart attack. After a while, Christopher looked at the box. The checkerboard was sticking out of the top. When Mom came in later with a snack, she found Christopher setting up a game on the board. When I set up the checker game, I felt better, said Christopher. It helped me remember all the games Grandpa and I played together. But I really, really miss him. Mom said, I know, I miss him too, and it's okay to feel sad and it's okay to cry. We loved Grandpa a lot, but we can also be happy because we know that Grandpa is in heaven with Jesus. Jesus died for the sins of all people, and he rose from the dead. We know that when we die, we will also rise from the dead and go to heaven. Someday, we will be with Jesus, Grandpa, and all the other believers. Thinking of Grandpa in heaven made Christopher smile a little. Knowing he was in heaven with Jesus made him smile a lot. Please pray with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for sinners. Now I know that I am forgiven and will live forever in heaven with you when I die. Amen. All right, so today's story is about Jesus dies and is buried. Now, at the time of Jesus' death, there were three amazing things that happened. First of all, the temple curtain was torn from the top to the bottom. All right. Um, this curtain was um, in a temple. And remember, we talked about how there was the most holy place where only the priests could go inside the temple, and then there was the other areas that the men could go and things like that. So this is the curtain that stopped people from going into that most holy place okay and so it was torn signifying that God is the one who tore this um, curtain and it would have been a really thick heavy curtain so it wouldn't be something easy to rip you know a person could not have done that the second thing was a strong earthquake now right, we really don't have earthquakes here um, we might have felt little ones, mom and dad, you know, but you guys probably really haven't ever felt an earthquake. Um, and when we do have them, they're very slight and we usually don't even notice. But this earthquake was so big that rocks split apart. Um, the earth was shaking and it affected the entire world that God created. And only in the book of Matthew is the third thing recorded. Now, this third thing says that all the tombs were opened. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection. Now, that's in Matthew 27. Since Christ is the first to be raised to life, many Bible people, scholars, believe that the tombs broke open at Christ's death, probably because of the earthquake. Okay. So that's kind of where that leads to, all right? And um, they believe that then the bodies were um, resurrected as Christ was. So why, if all these terrible things happened on Good Friday, why do we call it Good Friday? Why don't we call it Bad Friday or Sad Friday, maybe even Black Friday? If you look behind me, it's really dark outside. I decided to do this at night so it would be dark because that's kind of part of our story. Okay, so what is good about Good Friday? When we hear the word good, we think of 
how you feel, right? When someone says, I feel good. It, it's a pleasant thing. It's happy. Um, usually we're in a good mood. Um, if someone says, hey, you're really good at baseball. That means you can do it well. Um, I might even sometimes write good job on your paper. That means you did your paper or your handwriting or math or whatever it is. You've done a nice job on it. Um, you might even be called a good friend. All right, someone that people like to hang out with. So why is this Friday called Good Friday if there was pain and death and sadness? How is that good? Well, we're going to hear about Jesus' death and burial. And we need to remember that Jesus dying on the cross is called Good Friday. And um, we need to kind of think about sin um, isn't good but because of our sin Christ died and because he died that is a good thing okay he took our place so um, in our last story um, we talked about the soldiers taking Jesus um, and putting him on the cross and making fun of him beating him um, saying hurtful words to him uh, they took him to Golgotha, and that's where they put him on the cross. And this happened about 9 o'clock in the morning. So to kind of put that in perspective for you guys, during our school day, that would be around snack time. Okay? So around 9 o'clock in the morning is when he was put on the cross. And, of course, remember, he was on a busy street, so a lot of people would be um, walking around um, and being able to see him. Some of the people were just curious, so they would go see. Uh, some of the people were there to make fun of Jesus. Um, and some of them were there because they were happy he was dying. Only a few of his faithful followers showed up, okay, because they were sad. They, they didn't want to see that. At noon, okay, this is how our story starts on page 11, at noon. Now, noon, that's when we come in from lunch recess and go into reading. So, you know, it's a bright, sunny kind of time. Well, unless it's raining. At noon, there was darkness over the land. It was dark until 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock's when we start heading outside to go home. It doesn't look like out my window here, does it? It's a lot brighter than that, even when it's cloudy for rain. But this is what it looked like from noon until 3 o'clock. Then Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, during this hour, these three hours of darkness, that's when Jesus took all the sins upon himself. The dark, yucky sins of everyone. Because of this, Jesus was separated from God the Father. Okay? He was in a human being, so he would suffer and take our place for our sins. <clears throat> Some of the people said, he is calling Elijah. Now remember we talked about Elijah being a prophet, and that was in the Old Testament. One soldier wanted to give Jesus a drink. When Jesus knew he had done everything for our salvation, he said, It is finished. Then he died. Just then the temple curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and rocks broke apart. Now remember, it's dark like this. That's not normal either. Okay. After Jesus died, a rich man named Joseph got permission to take Jesus' body from the cross. He and others wrapped it in linen cloths. They put the body in a new tomb cut in a wall of rock. When they were finished, they rolled a large stone to block the entrance of the tomb. Some women watched to see where Jesus was buried. Now, these women, they're important. They wanted to see where Jesus was being buried because they intended to come back after the Sabbath day to put more spices on Jesus' body to basically preserve his body. Um, you've probably heard of mummies being in Egypt. Well, that's how they would preserve the dead bodies. They would wrap them just like a mummy and so they would put different spices and oils on the body to kind of help that so that's what these ladies wanted to do they wanted to go back and preserve the body but they couldn't do it because of Sabbath day can't work remember 
Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy? Nobody does anything on that day. Some church leaders came to Pilate and said, We remember that Jesus said he would rise after three days. So the tomb needs to be guarded closely so his followers don't come and steal his body. Pilate said they could use the temple guards to watch the tomb. So the tomb was sealed, and if anybody tried to get into it or steal the body or whatever, the temple guards would be there to stop that from happening. So the guards were posted and the tomb was sealed, but we know that death, a large stone, and even guards could not hold Jesus inside the tomb. In three days, he would rise again. If you look on the inside cover of your workbook, there's an empty space. I happen to have Zoe's here. If you look on the inside cover, there's an empty space right here. And it says the second article of the Apostles' Creed. All right. It says that Jesus has purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil. Not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom. Even though we might feel sad about Jesus suffering and dying for us, we need to be thankful that he did that. Um, we can be thankful that God loved us so much that he did that. He sacrificed his own son for you and me so that we don't have to take that punishment like Jesus did. Now every day is a good day, all right, because we're forgiven. So... Right here, this explanation kind of helps us understand um, what Jesus did for us. And if you look on your sticker page, if you look on your sticker page right here, that's what you're going to put there. You're going to peel this sticker off, and you're going to put it in the front cover of your book, right under, oops, right under where it says the second article, okay? If you turn to page 12 in your workbook, you'll see a word search there. Um, and the words that are underlined from John 13, verses 34 and 35, are the words that you're going to find in the circle. Now, here's the tricky part. After you finish circling the hidden words, you're going to write the letters that you did not circle on the line in order. Okay, so you're going to start at the top. And you're going to go across, okay, just like you're reading a sentence, okay? So you're going to go left to right. And at the bottom, it's going to tell us that when we love and help others, what we're doing. And we've talked about this many times, okay? So if you look in a mirror, what are you going to see? <laughs> you're going to see yourself, right? So when you use a mirror to look at a book, does it look the same? Yeah, it looks backwards. Let's see if I can do this. See? Backwards. So if I hold up the page now that we were looking at before, now it's backwards. Just like looking in a mirror. Well, when you point to the mirror and you look outside, you see things out the window, right? So I'm looking out the window right now. You guys can see those. And the mirror only reflects what's there. It's not going to reflect anything else, okay? Just like sitting here, you're not going to see anything else but me in this black window, okay? Because it's dark outside. But as God's children, we are able to be like mirrors, and that means we should reflect ourselves as God's children, how God wants us to be. We should be like him. Jesus told us how to be good reflections of him in John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. So that's what you're looking at. You're reflecting his love. Okay. One way that we can reflect Jesus' love in our lives and thank God for sending Jesus to die on the cross for our sins is to praise him. Okay? We always want to praise God. So even though 
Good Friday is really sad and horrible. It is good because he died and took our place to take our sins away.